record um, and we'll uh, get this started. Uh, welcome everyone. Um, just a few reminders, go ahead and mute, mute your microphone. There will be a Q&A at the end, so uh, you can um, be sure and ask any questions that you may have um, uh, at the end, and we'll go ahead and get started. So um, hopefully you're in the right place wanting to learn more about helping Nevada stu students take ownership of their digital lives with digital citizenship. Um, this is the webinar series. Uh, this is the second webinar uh, that um, is on this topic. And um, for those of you that don't know me, um, my name is Leanne Morris. I am the Instructional Technology Coordinator in Carson City School District. And I'm happy to say that I am um, a digital engineer for the Nevada Digital Learning Collaborative. And um, this webinar series is part of that. So we'll jump right into the uh, to today's agenda. Um, we'll be talking about some specific digital citizenship resources, uh, competencies, uh, some curriculum resources, uh, the nine elements of digital citizenship, uh, some of the particular um, ISTE standards that have um, to do with digital citizenship, and um, some great family engagement resources uh, to help our, our families. So. Um, as I mentioned, this is the second uh, webinar and um, many of these resources, I know uh, we have this uh, for a 30 minute block. I hope that everyone will be able to stick with us um, since we started a little bit late, but anyway, we'll go as quickly as we can. And um, many of these resources that I'm going to be talking about this evening, we will take a deeper dive in the next three months under these specific elements. So uh, I want to make sure, and you know what I forgot to do is I forgot to share the links. Um, I forgot to share this presentation actually in the chat so that you could follow along with me. So you know what, let me just stop here for just a second and let's make sure that you can follow along with me because that's the important part about this um, presentation tonight is that you have all the links um, available. So we'll get right back into this and you can follow along with me if you choose or there, like I said, we will not be able to go into all of the resources. So you'll have all of them at your own fingertips. Please let me know in the chat if you are not able to um, access the, the document, uh, the, the slide deck. We're gonna jump right into the um, digital citizenship competencies um, from a organization called DigCit Commit, you can see right here on the screen. There are five competencies that are listed here. I'm gonna jump into this website for just a minute here. We'll close up some of these resources here. So um, the great thing about these competencies is they're based on um, resources. As I scroll down through my screen here, you'll recognize Google, ISTE, many of the, um, the National Writing Project. There are many resources that these organizations have put together based around these five competencies. If you're looking for something in particular, you can click on one of these and then go to the competency. So that is, um, in a nutshell, these five uh, competencies are things that are, are important uh, to, to be aware of um, as we are thinking about digital citizenship. ISTE is um, a major part of that, and so that's why I wanted to uh, make sure that I highlighted them. On any slide, almost every um, link uh, or image uh, will, will be a link to that resource. So like I said, we're going to really skim over these, but then as we uh, take a deep dive into those nine elements, we'll get into some of these um, later on. This part of the screen are actually all of those resources as hyperlinks. So as I scroll through this, you can see that each one of these um, could be a, a, a resource to click on. So they're right there at your fingertips uh, to go into. We'll talk specifically about a few of these tonight, but we'll definitely get into them later. I also wanna highlight another um, 
resource that goes along with this, and it's the DigSit Kids book. And the 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 amazing thing and just really cool about this is this book was written actually by a a ten year old boy and his mother, and that though they're the authors of this book. And so it's a compilation of stories as this shows from around the world about how um, you know technology has helped us come together and you know our world is much smaller now because of the use of technology and being responsible. I also put this in this is also another hyperlink um, to a great uh, resource uh, for our, our teachers on the call um, tech and learning that also has some other digital citizenship resources. So as we continue through Oops, I guess I actually clicked on that. So this is the actual resource, how to teach digital citizenship. Um, so once again, this is uh, just a, a plethora of, of resources that we're gonna kind of skim over tonight, but um, we'll uh, get into them in, in, in a deeper dive as we continue. Um, Focusing on the positive, if you were able to attend my first webinar, we talked about really how the shift of uh, digital citizenship, where it was focused on a lot of the do's, um, I'm sorry, focused on a lot of the things that we didn't want kids to do. And now the things, uh, we've, we've changed that focus to what we want kids to do or to be uh, a part of. And so uh, this information is out of a great resource um, called the Digital Citizenship Handbook for School Leaders. And so what are the things that we really want our students to be able to do? Be involved, be an example, be curious, um, you know, be a friend and be understanding. And one of the things that I'm going to uh, go into a little bit more detail in is about, you know, if we're curious, where are we actually finding information? And so the next slide here, uh, in the very first uh, presentation, um, I talked about what's called the CRAP test. And these, um, this is how you, um, this is a test that you can use to evaluate your, your resources, the currency, the relevance, the authority, as you can see here. There's also another one that's even a little um, more simple, maybe for some of our younger students, um, called the real test, get real. And so um, this was put together by um, an ed tech um, professional international consultant, Alan November, about, you know, just taking a different acronym, read the URL, examine it, you know, who, who produced it and look at the links. So once again, just another resource to help our students know about, you know, what are, what is the information that is out there. Um, one of the major resources um, when you think about digital citizenship is common sense education. And so that is a major, um, it's a major player in what we, we find as educators and parents that um, really have great quality um, resources. Everything you know to teach digital citizenship, if we hop over to this website, uh, the great thing about this is, um, if we scroll down here, you can see by grade band that you can find ready to teach lessons. And in the first webinar, we talked about this for National Digital Citizenship Week and some of the lessons that were highlighted specifically for that week. And um, in addition to that, um, they've actually put some great uh, activities together specifically for middle and high school students around distance learning in our you know current situation. I also wanted to highlight that um, all Nevada educators uh, were very fortunate this year to have subscriptions to Discovery Ed and Discovery Ed also has common sense resources within it. So I wanted to be sure and point that out once again by grade level uh, with, with some of the videos that are right within Discovery Ed. So then continuing on with uh, the resources from Common Sense, they have developed a brand new um, focus on digital citizenship, specifically for middle school students, as you can see here, for grades six through eight students. Uh, it is uh, a, a great resource to, um, you know, is this not only for teachers, but also for parents on, you know, taking your children on a test drive for social media. They ask you or want to have a specific kind of, a, of account, you can um, go here and actually have them go through uh, this, this little scenario. Um, and it's very well put together uh, 
based on um, many of, of these things and, and others. Uh, it was actually created at Cornell University in collaboration with Common Sense, but that is a great new resource for our middle school students. Uh, another resource that Common Sense put together just be uh, since uh, the pandemic is this wide open school, um, helping families and, and teachers find trusted resources to support distance learning specifically. As you can see here, more than 75 partners and supporters. As we jump into this, there are very specific lessons around digital citizenship, but there's also all sorts of other student activities that are, you know, content based uh, that that are available as well. So I wanted to make sure that you, um, you know, everyone on the call tonight was aware of this by grade band, uh, great resources, once again, specifically for, you know, students that are doing remote only learning. And one more, um, whoops, sorry about that. One more uh, resource and, and actually um, a not necessarily a resource, but a recognition for teachers, schools and districts that use common sense resources. Uh, there's a, a sequence of things that uh, teachers can, can go through. It's a great professional learning opportunity to become a common sense educator. And then if schools, if they have um, a certain percentage, I believe it's 75% of the teachers that have gone through the educator program, uh, they can actually have the designation as a common sense school. And same thing then um, even a common sense district that um, you know using the resources uh, providing the professional learning, having family engagement, um, you know, activities and resources available. So this is a great recognition. I am not aware of any of the 17 school districts in the state of Nevada that have achieved this recognition, but I know we do have some individual educators. I'm not sure about the schools either, but I definitely want to check that out. So now we're going to jump into uh, what are those nine elements of digital citizenship that I've been talking about? They're divided up into three categories, and that's why we're going to talk about um, these three specifically in the month of January. How do we protect our, ourselves and be safe on the internet with the digital rights and responsibilities, health and wellness, and security? So many of these resources that I'm talking about this evening, we're going to uh, take a deep dive into each one of these elements specific to help with those uh, particular elements. And I want to give credit to, um, once again, Mike Ribble, who is really the digital citizenship guru of um, the many resources. Um, this particular book, Digital Citizenship in Schools, Nine Elements All Students Should Know. So this, um, once again, th th these are the first three, and this will be our January webinar. And then the next three are under the umbrella of educate and be savvy, uh, digital commerce, communication, and literacy. And some of these, um, it's interesting that we may not think about, you know, elementary age students, you know, buying and selling things on, you know, online, but if they're, you know, playing games and they're getting tokens and things like that, you know, that is a way of um, thinking about digital commerce as well. So I'll be talking about what these, um, how these elements are, you know, applied and what they lo might look like for different age level of students. And then the last one, um, is the respect and social, which we have digital access, etiquette, and digital law. And then this will be the March webinar, uh, taking a, a close look at what this entails and what um, what we are thinking about with this. Um, in particular, mm -hmm. digital etiquette, it's interesting that um, there was a, a word coined many mm -hmm. years ago actually called netiquette, and um, that's kind of where this came from. So that is a very quick overview of what those nine elements are. And as I mentioned, we'll be really taking a look at those um, in the next three months. Something else that is important for uh, all of our educators um, in our school districts is to know about their internet safety and technology acceptable and responsible use policy, whatever it might be called. Usually it's referred to as an acceptable use policy or um, 
AUP, but it's also, um, you know, yeah, want yeah. To, to really focus on the positive, to be, you know, responsible and good. empower our students to be. Uh, yeah. um, I don't, I guess it's okay. I don't, somebody's not on mute, but that's fine. <laughs> um, I mentioned ISTE before. Um, which is a, a really huge supporter of everything with, with technology. And there's a great starter guide um, for digital citizenship. Uh, let's see here, hold on. Okay. This starter guide is a great resource that has some video clips and each one of these if you'll notice are what i put here so if you if we click on these this will actually take you to that resource um, that was on the this particular uh, pdf so i wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of this great resource um, specifically if um if we have you know some some folks that maybe haven't um, done much with digital citizenship, this is a great resource. Then I also want to um, share with you about the ISTE standards. Uh, the ISTE standards, first of all, ISTE is the International Society for Technology and Education, and they have standards for uh, many different uh, key stakeholders. The first one is, um, as you can see here, the standards for students. Uh, this is a hyperlink. If I click on this, this will actually take you to all the standards. And notice here that Digital Citizen is the second one. If you click on the plus sign, which is what I had a screenshot of, there's also this great little playlist that videos have actually been created. You can see they're very short um, that actually explain uh, these individual standards uh, very, very nicely. And so if we go on to the next screen, you'll notice that we have standards for educators and it's the same idea that, you know, these are specific things to digital citizenship for teachers. And they're, they're set up all the same way. These blue links in the, um, in the website itself are hyperlinks. And so when we go to that, you can actually hover over it and it will give you a, a, a more um, more information and uh, additional uh, additional information on what that particular standard is actually talking about. So as we continue, uh, standards for educational leaders, it used to be standards for administrators, but they changed that to uh, education leaders. And notice here, um, equity and citizenship advocate. And so, um, you know, we really want our, our um, education leaders to, uh, you know, to be aware of, of these standards as well. And uh, there's either five or six um, within each uh, stakeholder group. And then last but not least, we also have standard for standards for coaches. I'm not sure if we have any instructional coaches on the call tonight, but there are also uh, standards for our coaches on modeling digital citizenship and ways to help support our teachers in the roles that they have. So I wanted to make sure that um, those were all included and that you were aware of those. Another um, great resource is this it's called in control and i thought that this we uh, we won't spend time this evening playing this video but i i thought it was very interesting that um surveys that that have been done how do you spend your 458 minutes of digital media each day um most people that use forms of technology spend over seven hours of a day doing something with technology, whether it is with a computer, a tablet, a phone, or something else. Um, you know, what is that media? And that could include, you know, video watching, Netflix, whatever. So this is a great little resource. And their uh, curriculum is really focused on the middle school as well. So um, I wanted to make sure that uh, everybody was aware of that. 
I wanted to also include this resource, uh, Brain Pop. Um, probably most of you are familiar with this resource. Um, we are very fortunate in Carson City School District to have a district-wide site license to this. So we have access to every resource, but even if you don't, um, there, there are free parts to this resource. So if we, um, by me clicking on this, you can see all of these different um, resources that are available for, uh, you know, specifically around technology and digital citizenship. And um, we'll focus, on, um, we'll dig into a couple of these um, as we get into those elements again. But I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of those. And then this is just to the Brain Pop site itself. So keeping in mind that all, you know, almost every image and um, if you hover over things on each slide, you'll be able to find uh, additional information. Uh, the next resource I want to focus on is the resources that Google puts together. Um, I put this image to um, an organization called I Keep Safe. They have partnered with Google on this particular Google Digital Literacy and Citizenship um, curriculum. And so if we click on that, you can see that there are videos, there's lesson plans, and um, these are all great vetted lessons uh, that have been put together by those two organizations. If we go back to this, another um, Google specific resource is this Be Internet Awesome with Google. And they have all sorts of digital safety resources as well for uh, kids and um, parents and, you know, lots of things to do at, at home because I certainly want to focus on some of our family engagement practices. I also put both of these images in as the PDFs, the English one and the Spanish one. So this is actually a, a resource guide. As you can see, it's 32 pages for families about being internet awesome. So I wanted to uh, include those uh, as a resource for, for everyone. Um, the resources on this page, the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC has put together this particular resource. It's been around for uh, about 12, 12 to 15 years now. I'm not sure exactly when it came out, but they have updated it. And this is a great little, it's a PDF document um, that is a great resource for parents and students to be, um, to be looking at. And um, this Digital Futures Initiative also has some great resources. Notice up here in the top, we've got you know, resources for teachers and parents, but it's really some, some great information about helping our students be safe and what kinds of things they, they cover. In addition, as you can see, in addition to just digital citizenship, also other, other things that uh, teens and um, students might, might be dealing with. So I wanted to be sure that you had um, a, a reference to that. And then the free resources, there are also uh, many different resources here that can be downloaded um, specifically uh, that, that might be helpful. So then we're on to the next resources here. The Center for Humane Technology. If any of you um, on the call are familiar with the uh, new uh, doc video documentary that has been released called The Social Dilemma, this is the organization that put that together. And so there's lots of, of resources on here about um, helping our students and um, basically our society be able to use technology um, you know, more responsibly and just in a healthier way. So I wanted to highlight that one. And there are also um, specific resources that they have put together uh, just during the pandemic. Another resource called the Family Online Safety Institute also has some parenting resources that are available. And this is a, a, a great resource, uh, as you can see, for parents, for professionals uh, that um, provide lots of, of great information um, once again. And I know I'm going through these very quickly. I'm just skimming over what, what they are, but like I said, we'll be getting into them um, later on. Even at the, um, at the federal level, the Office of Educational Technology um, at the U.S. Department of Education put this uh, family and uh, parent and family digital learning guide together. This is a PDF if I click on this, and then this actually takes you to the website to give you um, a little bit of information about why they put this guide together. Um, 
just so that you are aware of, of that great resource. Another um, fantastic tool, and we've had the uh, great opportunity here in Carson City to have uh, community-wide hostings of these two uh, video documentaries. Screenagers was created by a pediatrician, Dr. Delaney Rushton, who is a pediatrician in Seattle, um, based on her own children's um, you know, her concern as a parent for her own children's use uh, uh, um, of screen time, and then also all of the parents that came, um, that, that would come to her and, you know, voice their concerns about their children and the amount of screen time. So the first documentary, Growing um, Screenagers Growing Up in the Digital Age, this is a video trailer for that. Um, with uh, the pandemic going on, they're actually having virtual uh, video showings um, where we actually brought the community together at the community center and watched it together on a big screen. But um, this is available. And then she just released last year this next chapter, Uncovering Skills for Stress Resilience. Um, just to talk about briefly a couple of other resources that she has, um, Tech Talk Tuesdays are uh, an um, she has those available um, every Tuesday. She has a call in where people can, you know, um, either call in or send their questions and get answers to that. So that has really grown over the last few years. And then she recently just released this new book called Parenting in the Screen Age that um, where now there are uh, communities that actually have chapter clubs where parents are coming together and um, having a book club about the things um, that are discussed in this book about parenting in the screen age. And then another great resource that was just released this year too, uh, Parenting for a Digital Future, How Hopes and Fears About Technology sh Shape Children's Lives. Uh, these two ladies are actually out of the London School of Economics and Political Science. And so uh, this is another great resource. I haven't quite finished reading it yet, but um, it, it's, it's a, it looks like a great resource as well. And um, the... Um, Back to common sense, because there's so much that they offer, I just wanted to throw this in here, too, about uh, for um, our parents on the call uh, as well, uh, encouraging your student to be a good digital citizen, even having um, a digital learning pledge or a digital, digital learning agreement. And that's one of the things that Dr. Rushton talked about in the screenagers is, you know, if that is something that is uh, um, very helpful to, you know, help. Uh, promote that positive, as it says, a positive culture for, you know, the screen time and um, just being a good digital citizen. And this screen has lots of resources on it, as you can see. Many of these were actually in that list of competencies, but every single one of these icons is a resource that will take you to, it looks like that one isn't, but um, anyway, I, um, I'll i make sure that these are all working. I thought I had them all working. Uh, I'll just highlight a couple of them because I think we're uh, pretty close to our 30 minutes. Um, we, we are so lucky in Nevada to have PBS. We have PBS Reno and we have PBS Las Vegas and they have some great technology literacy resources as you can see here. Um, Many of these uh, are mirroring those elements. And so this is an excellent resource filter by grade type. You know, what kinds of things um, are you particularly looking for? So I wanted to, to, to highlight that one. And then another one, um, this Connect Safely um, also has some great uh, guides for parents about different things as well. I wanted to point out that um, I, I did put a few resources on here from other school districts and other um, you know, states. This Planet Nutshell was actually created by the Utah uh, Department of Education. Notice that this one is uh, from Canada. This is actually a resource from Australia. So we have some international resources on here as well that are um, that have some great information and a little bit different perspective than you know some of the things um, from just our United States resources. And so that takes us to our uh, Q&A time because I think we're about 30, 34 minutes into our uh, webinar here tonight. So um, 
if anyone has any questions, uh, you could please unmute your mic. It doesn't look like any questions have been asked in the chat that I can see, but I would um, welcome any questions, comments um, that you might have. Well, um, giving adequate wait time, um, I don't know if there are any questions or not. If you um, do have um, any questions, we appreciate you uh, joining us. You can um, email me. I will make sure that um, we. I can actually just put that in um, in the chat right now. So if you are interested in um, or want to find out more information. And uh, hopefully we will be able to um, have you join us again uh, in January when we're focusing on those first three elements of digital citizenship, rights and responsibilities, health and wellness and security. And so we'll take a deeper dive into uh, what that looks like and what some of these resources um, that we skimmed over tonight, uh, how they apply. And thank you, Annie, for um, sharing the information about future viewing. And um, I do believe we are recording this. So um, I think that is good. And then I just wanted to um, make sure that I have this disclaimer. Uh, the Nevada Department of Ed is providing this artifact as a public service and is providing it for informational purposes only. It is not a statement of official state policy, nor should it be construed as legal advice on any subject matter. So this is just a plethora of resources that are available. So um, unless you have um, any other questions, I will, um, I will uh, go ahead and um, stop the recording and um, go ahead and end the, end the webinar. <laughs>